In this episode, F1 raced in Brazil, uh, NASCAR wraps up in Phoenix, and the WEC finishes it off in Bahrain. Welcome to episode 291 of the We Are Auto Show. What's up, Dirk? Mr. Michael Rowell, how is the iRacing going? Uh, it's going well. It's going well. Yeah? B-class promotion. All the way up to B. All the way up to B. And I've got my four B-class races, so when the season ends, I'm A-class, unless I get my fast track. Well, your safety rating up. Okay. Fantastic. And that's I've road. Been, yeah, I've been road, not oval or anything, but right. I've been doing some GT, GT racing, some GT3 racing at Fuji in the Porsche, because mm-hmm. of course, what else am I going to race? Am I going to race? And I've been feeling quick. Yeah. I've had some top 10 finishes. It's been feeling good. GT3 is fun. It's so much fun. I'm finally in in races in lobbies where you can actually race people. Right. You're out of rookies. I'm well out of rookies at this point. Good. I'm at this point I've got people, I mean multiple laps I'm defending and then I'm attacking and then I'm defending and then I'm attacking and then we're side by side. I take an early apex, they take a late. That's the fun stuff. It's become like proper fun at this point that's the fun stuff and now the problem is is i really want to get a direct drive wheel and a load cell brake pedal <laughs> <laughs> i'm not going to do that i'm expecting a child so the funds are allocated to the the young one not the sim racing at the moment for now for now yeah i'm sure you will eventually upgrade the rig but yeah. uh yeah good game fun game a lot of fun fun stuff so, so ooh, jinx you owe me a coke let's go all right you go ahead Let's kick it over to some racing that did happen over the weekend. And not your racing. This was F1, which was over in Brazil. Yes, Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo. The Brazilian Grand Prix, which I think got extended out to 2030. I saw a headline Which is good that. because I have to say, I actually like that circuit. It's pretty good. Interlagos has a little bit of elevation. Mm-hmm. It's also got those weird, like, banked corners. Yep. So you can take a high line and a low line. It, it races well. It, it does. races very well. It's cool. I like that. I like Interlagos. I'm also happy with Interlagos. I, I'm happy with them keeping it into 2023 or 2030. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, but this race started off with uh, a bang. Especially the bang before the bang was quality. Uh, the, yep. the quality of the quality of the quality of the quality. Yeah. I don't. I don't know how quality works at the moment. I'm a little confused about that. I think every proper F1 fan that's been watching F1 for years. Whenever there's a sprint weekend, it's just mass confusion. <laughs> so what does the original quality mean? Because you have the quality, but then you have the quality for the sprint race. Right. So the, what's the point of it all? I don't know. And I think that they grid based on the qualifying results, not the sprint race results. Which doesn't make a, a, a lot of sense. Because if that's the case, Lance Stroll started P3. He did. I'm sorry? The Lance Stroll started P3. Oddly enough. Yeah, that's weird. Oddly enough. Yeah, he started P3. Uh, but in the race race, not the qualifying race, the, the sprint race, whatever you want to call it, in the real race, Ferrari went full Ferrari. Yes. Before the race started, Leclerc put the car in the barrier on the warm-up lap. Was it his fault or did he lose something mechanical? It was a mechanical failure, either hydraulics or steering or some, something went wrong and the car just snapped on him and he had no chance. Uh, and his, his radio call was, why am I so unlucky? <laughs> he actually said those words verbatim. <laughs> why am I so unlucky? <laughs> Have you seen like portrait pictures of Charles Leclerc's face as he's gone through the years? At no. He, he's aging like a 92-year-old man. Is it like the president photos? He, he, like the first year that they're in office and then the fourth year they're in yes. office? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, when he signed his contract for Ferrari, he just looks like a young, sprightly young man and just so full of hope. And like his most recent one, he just kind of looks like all of the life has just been sucked <laughs> straight out of his face. No, Ferrari. <laughs> no. <laughs> Poor guy. I feel so bad for him. I do, too. So that happened, and, and instantly they like <laughs> had to scrap the start and go fix the barrier. And uh, then after that, they finally got the cars ready to go. They had the start, and then there was a huge touch that happened between a whole bunch of different cars along the front straight. And I think three cars ended up in the barriers. 
and they had to then red flag and restart Three cars the race in the again. barriers, and the one car I think also took some damage from an errant wheel. A couple cars took damage, but yeah, there was a wheel that was tumbling <clears throat> around. Ricardo got hit by a wheel. I think Piastri got rear-ended by a car that was spinning and broke his wing. And yeah. It was a hot mess of a start. Before they actually got the first racing lap completed, three cars were retired. That, three cars were retired. That's not good statistics. No, not at all. Uh, but they went forward, and they did get all all the laps done. Now, there were some good battles, specifically between uh, Alonso had a really good battle with Perez. Th- that was good. But before we get to the Alonso-Perez battle, I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. Because there's one team that I'm thinking of that looked not fast, and there was another team that looked quite fast, and we're looking at one of them. McLaren looked fast. Yeah. Norris looked fast. Yes. There was a point where Norris was challenging Verstappen. Right, in the beginning of the race. Yep. For a little bit in the beginning. Yeah, not for long, but for a little bit. Mm -hmm. So my question is, if McLaren had found this pace earlier in the year... Is there a chance Verstappen would have not won as many races? Hmm. I thought you were going to ask me, is there a chance that he would have won the championship? And I said, no. Not a chance. But win races is an interesting question. Do you think that there would have been enough pressure on Verstappen from Norris or Piastri with a quick car to where maybe he got him on an undercut or something? I hope yes. I think no. I'm on the same page as you because Verstappen is not human. No. It doesn't really even matter the track with the exception of the one, which was where? Singapore? Yeah. Yeah. They were just bonkers out of it for there. But with the exception of Singapore, uh, he just drives away. He does. Uh, And I think that they do a very good job at limiting his speed to conserve the tires, to conserve the engine, to conserve the brakes. To If they just let him go all out, he would lap almost everybody, it seems like. Or they would have a mechanical failure. True. I don't know. Because, because he would push it so hard. Right. I would assume that they're running slightly less brake pads. They're running slightly lower fuel than everybody because he could just get out in clean air and sail. Yeah. And like do some fuel saving, do some brake saving, do some tire saving, right? And he doesn't have to push super hard while everybody's in traffic in the hot, dirty air true. battling for their life. It is it is true. I have another question. Mm-hmm. Why is Mercedes the slowest Mercedes powered car? <laughs> That's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> because Mercedes <laughs> is supplying engines to Aston Martin. Uh-huh. Are they not also supplying engines to McLaren? Mm-hmm. So, of all the Mercedes-powered cars, Mercedes is the slowest of all the Mercedes? I don't have an answer for that one. Because they were slow. They weren't quick. I mean, yeah. no, no, no. They weren't just not quick. They were slow. Hamilton finished P8. Right. Right. Russell DNF'd because he was so slow that he was basically out of the points, and they said, just retire the car. There's no point. What Uh, is wrong at Mercedes? I don't know. They have one race where they're good, and then they go back to being shit. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. Mercedes has been weird all year long. Sometimes they've shown, like, brilliance, but you could argue that about any team. Maybe Aston has been relatively competitive evenly throughout the whole season they had a slump but they're they're back with now. alonzo they've been competitive uh strolls just we don't talk about him yeah we don't talk about him uh mclaren initially started off like crap and then climbed throughout the season and now are like second best car on the grid to be honest i would, second best I, I would say uh, yeah I, I would say mclaren is the second best car on the grid mm-hmm. close behind, well close with aston right Which, and then can you believe we just said that uh, no, but <laughs> F1's in a weird spot right now. I don't know. I, I also don't know if Mercedes is just like, whatever, tank this year, season's over, who cares, develop the next car. That could be. That That's may, my that, guess. That could, ch- that could check out. Yep. That's my guess. That could check out. So, I didn't mean to derail you there. You could go ahead and continue with your Checo versus uh, Alonso conversation there. 
Checo versus Alonso was an interesting battle between uh, a savvy veteran, which is Alonso, mm-hmm. and Checo, who's just fighting for his seat for next year. <laughs> fighting for his freaking life at this point. Fighting to stay in Red Bull, yes. Uh, and the savvy veteran pulled some very veteran moves. Yeah. He... Alonso, what a bro. Yeah. I, I loved that battle. It went all the way down to the final front straight on the final lap, and they're side by side coming across the stripe. I think the the gap was like uh, five hundredths or something like that. Yeah, like really, really small it was, gap. It was the gap was less than a tenth. They're, they're side by side going across the line, uh, but Alonso made a really good pass about halfway through the final lap and was able to hold off Checo, who had the lead going into that lap. Yeah, uh, and if. <sighs> I feel like if you're Red Bull, well, how do you let this happen? That's what I don't know. Because you had a McLaren and an Aston Martin finish above your other Red Bull again. Yeah. It can't be that much driver, can it be? Is Verstappen that much better? I don't want to say yes, but the answer is yes. He just is that much better. Man. I dare I say Verstappen is a quality of driver that F1 hasn't seen in a while. Yeah. Yep. He's just a different caliber at the moment. At the moment. Right. Yeah. I mean, he just, he's just so cool, calm and collected as well. There's, he's, there's just like never any drama with him. I mean, he's almost never sideways. Never. There's almost a never, never any point in any lap where it kind of looks like, Whoa! no, he's just so cool, crisp, just clean lines everywhere. I remember one moment all season long and it was Spa, O'Rouge and Radion in the wet. He got sideways once in the wet once. That's it. That's it. And it was a quick little snap save. I'm good. Okay. Drive away. And he came on the radio and he said, Oh, that won't happen again. Or something along those lines. Yeah. And it never happened again. Yeah. It's like, oh, jeez. He's just a robot. He's just a, a machine. I don't know. He really is. Uh, it's impressive. But what will we see, do you think, next season? Will the gap be closed, basically, is the question. I'd like to see it closed because I'd like to see more competitiveness up front. Right. But I don't know at this point. I I don't know. They are so dominant. And the real worry is that they've been so dominant that they've had the back half of the season to not even develop their car and just develop next year's car. Yeah. Like they basically just wrote this car off. The, the season was already won halfway through. The, uh, who all right. cares what happens with the rest of the season? Let's just work on next next season's car. Yep. It's Don't the same iterate. approach that we think Mercedes may be taking, but just from a, 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 I guess a perspective of calmness. Right. Versus panic. Right. And they've never, that I've seen, had the strategy all bunged up in the Ferrari way that Ferrari would do every single time. <laughs> they they haven't like screwed up the tires in ways that other teams have. They've just had it under control and it's not really been close. Yeah. I that's don't know. Very accurate. Yep. That's kind of how this race went. Uh Verstappen did take the lead and just kind of drive off in the distance. McLaren did make a push in the beginning of the race and then that didn't really happen, but at least they tried. So they did finish. It was, let's see, Verstappen, obviously P1, Lando Norris P2, but finished 8.2 seconds behind, which is a lot. I will concede that, but it's not as a lot as it's been. Right. It's been 10 to 20 usually. Mm-hmm. Somewhere then there. from the McLaren to Alonso in P3 was 25 seconds. That's about right. That is far. That's a big gap. That's a big gap. That's a big gap. That's big enough for a pit stop from the top guys. Yep. And still coming out ahead. Yep. It was a it was a somewhat entertaining race. The start was exciting. The the chaos in the beginning, the formation lap. Then it kind of cooled off, and then you got a little bit of excitement at the end with mm-hmm. the battle between uh, Alonso and Perez. Yeah. Now, do you think that that drive from Perez was good? For his next year's bid or bad? Honestly, bad. Why? 
He shouldn't have to fight that hard. I think Perez needs to have just the natural ability to be able to just do it without having to, like, make it look and feel and seem like he's got to put 110% into every corner every time to just stay competitive. I mean, it looked too, I don't know. It didn't look cool, calm, collected. If you compare it to Verstappen, certainly it looks flustered and a mess. Mm Mm-hmm. Is it fair to compare it to Verstappen? Nobody is on his level. No. But again, I just, you can't help but feel you're in a Red Bull. Yep. It shouldn't be a close, it shouldn't, you shouldn't be five hundredths off at the finish with an Aston Martin. Yep. With a guy that's 92,000 years old. (laughs) A dinosaur. Yes. I, as a fan, it was brilliant. Yep. It was fantastic. We want more of that, please, Formula One. But if you're a Red Bull executive looking at this going, hmm, you had to try that hard to finish only five hundredths over in Aston? I don't know how to look at it. Because if you take the approach of like, oh, he didn't crash into the Ferrari on lap one. Okay, great. He got almost a podium. He got us points. He didn't screw up our strategy for Verstappen. He kind of held up some people behind us. I don't know. I don't know how to look at it. I think that this is like a middle ground race where it's like, didn't help, didn't hurt. Yeah, it could be neutral for him. Maybe it's a neutral race, but Vegas is coming up. We'll Mm -hmm. see how, I mean, roll the dice figuratively and literally Mm -hmm. what's going to happen there. Nobody really knows. Apparently, it's supposed to be one of the coldest races that F1 has ever done. In Vegas? Yeah. I believe it. Yeah. It's Vegas in the middle of November. I was in Vegas in January, February. There was snow. Not only that, it's at night. Which, okay, you have no sun. No. And when there is no sun and there is no cloud layer, the heat just radiates out. And actually, I'm going to take that even further. It's not just at night. It's deep into the night. Yeah. It's night plus plus a few more hours. Right. It's not like sun sets at 6, so it's mm, racing at 6.30. It's like sun's going to set at like 6, but they're not racing until 10 local time. Yeah. Every single degree of heat has dissipated since then. It will be chilly. It will be chilly. Apparently, there might be protests going on as far as the staff goes at the casinos and stuff. Uh, People are unhappy but it's kind of normal when f1 first comes into town that people are a bit unhappy and Mm -hmm. do some protesting type stuff so we'll see how it plays out um i'm curious if the track will actually race well i don't think so Uh, but it's a street circuit i don't know we'll see what happens with it it's got like seven turns yeah yeah it looks very boring it does but that's not this weekend that is next weekend correct uh yeah that was f1 in brazil now they get a weekend off Yes. As they move to the Americas. So, also happening in the Americas was NASCAR at Phoenix, baby. Final race of the season. Season finale. Yep. Interesting track layout at Phoenix. You can go under the the yellow apron line and actually race down there, which is kind of odd. It's weird. But it does make for uh, 40 lanes of racing. Yeah, they weren't going three wide. They were going like five wide. Five, and you could probably do ten wide at one point. Honestly, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Uh, it's an interesting, like, trying, kind of triangular layout kind of track. Uh, think of, like, Daytona, but a little way shorter and, I don't know, a bit different. Uh, no pack racing. You kind of had to conserve tires at Phoenix. That's that's how the racing goes here. You, you start the run thinking okay i need to save tires i'm not going to push hard in the beginning yeah uh and then in the middle you think okay i can start to push if there's a battle and then at the end you say oh god they're gone yeah and you slide around everywhere uh but there were four drivers that were in the playoffs now who are those four drivers you had ryan blaney kyle larson william byron and christopher bell those were the four in the playoffs right and there was, I believe, Christopher Bell had a problem early. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had brake issues and hit the wall and retired the car. So that left three. Uh, and 
interestingly enough, in the top five, all three of them were there. So yeah, the that's race, pretty wild. The race to the end is always kind of fascinating to me to see what. Why is it that like teams that are in the playoffs can step up and be so much faster and so much better? Mm-hmm. I don't. That doesn't make sense to me in my head as to why that always happens. But it does in sports. That always happens. Whoever's in the they championship just, hunt, they, they find another gear. They they figure it out. I don't know how, but it was awesome to see the battle between all three of them, between William Byron, Kyle Larson, and Ryan Blaney, to the end, like mm-hmm. to the the last lap, which was cool to see. I would have expected my pick going into this race was Kyle Larson because he had won it, I think, last year, and he's been the dominant guy at Phoenix. Yeah. Larson looked good going in. He did. During the race, he looked good. He definitely, I think, had the lead at one point, was leading the championship, in quotes, Mm -hmm. at one point as well. But at the end, Ryan Blaney drove around him. Clean pass, good hard racing, but drove around him. After watching the highlight package, there was some Good passing. There's some really good passing. There, that looked like a. I I wish I would have seen that live because that looked like there was some properly good hard racing. And it, it they weren't bumping or grinding on each other. It was clean, close, tight racing, side by side, through right. corners. It just looked like it was a good, a properly good race. Yep. It wasn't very dangerous, but it was hard racing, mm-hmm. which is what you want to see. Yeah. Now. Ryan Blaney took the win. No, he didn't actually take the win. I think Ross Chastain took the win. Ross Chastain took the race win, Mm -hmm. but... Ryan Blaney took the championship win, Mm -hmm. which was cool to see. Yeah. So I I thought it was a fantastic finish. Uh, F1, please. Please. Yes, let's do something like that. Please. Something. Something different, because... Yeah. Get a little boring. Talked about it many times in the past. Uh, Mm -hmm. That is the final race of the NASCAR season. Yeah, so NASCAR's done. NASCAR is done. Mm-hmm. Yep. All of them seem to be kicking off. Now, yes. we have one more finale to talk about, which was the WEC yes, the over in Bahrain. World Endurance Championship. They got the oil money, baby. Yes, they do. <laughs> uh, this race was exciting to watch. I listened to the majority of it because I was working throughout the day, but it sounded exciting. It's multi-class racing. It's not a particularly exciting track, but it doesn't really matter because it made for fun racing to watch. Yeah. There were many GTP battles, or no, wait, they they call them hypercars in this. The, the, many top-class battles yeah. that were very, very exciting. Uh, the Porsche, the Jota Porsche was battling with Ferraris. Cadillac was punting Toyotas right off the start. The Jota, Hertz Jota Porsche. Yeah. Not the Penske factory Porsche. Yep. The customer entry. Right. That was cool to see. Mm. And they went back and forth with Ferrari for five, six, Watching seven laps in a row. That was a great a bunch of laps. battle. Uh, and then the two Ferraris went side by side for many different times. And they were bumping and grinding on each other, just mm-hmm. doing team f- inter-team Ferrari shenanigans. Mm-hmm. Very Ferrari-like. Yep. <laughs> Almost ruined each other's races. Mm-hmm. Nothing new here. Nothing to Cadillac see. Cadillac did not have a good race. Cadillac did not have a good race. They were pretty much done from the start. Yeah, they started off by locking up and just punting one of the Toyotas. They just drove, locked up, drove straight through turn one. Mm-hmm. Just, uh, just turn one went right. It just went straight. Very Lamar reminiscent. Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> oh, my God, yes. When the Cadillac... <laughs> uh, was it even... All, was it Was the race green yet? Yeah, yeah, it was the it was the first time they were going down the back stretch with yes, the chicanes. And it was gone. He just stuffed it in the barrier. That was great. Just snap over seer stuffed it in the barrier. Cadillac yep. doing Cadillac things now, I guess. I get that is you know, it's a trend at this point. It is developing reputation. It is. <laughs> Crash the car on the first lap or have a good race. Either or. Nothing in between. Nope. Nothing in between. <laughs> uh it was it was exciting. It was cool to watch. It's uh, I think that this race starts in the day and goes into the night, which was also pretty neat. Correct. I do like the transition. Now, this race is a sad race for me. Why? It's saying goodbye to my favorite class of car. GTE. Mm-hmm. GTE yep. slash GTLM, whatever right. you want to call it. Last race of the, the whole class. Yeah, that class doesn't exist anymore. Nope. It's, so we're not, the, the C8R is gone. Mm-hmm. The 
Porsche 911 RSR is gone. The Ferrari 488 GTE is gone. <laughs> I'm going to shed a tear. It's all right. We'll move on. There will be more GT racing in the future. With LMGT3. Oh, yes. Naming conventions. Thank you. Mm, yes. Uh-huh. Just, I'm just calling it GT3. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. It's GT, yes. And right. But those will be GT3 <clears throat> cars with the, I think, slight Le Mans twist and some fashion, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but should be entertaining. Yeah. It will be very entertaining. Now, I did see some... Uh, actually, you give me the results first. Uh, yeah. So the race was taken by Toyota. It was Toyota 1-2, the number 7 car, then the number 8 car. Then it was actually the Porsche factory entry, the Porsche Penske Motorsport number 6 car, that Kevin Estra, Andre Lauder, and Lawrence Van Tour finished P3. So that left the Ferrari, Ferrari, then the Hertz Team Jota. Gotcha. Cool. Uh, what about in GT? Uh, well, let me tell you. It looked like in GT, it looked like that was a Ferrari, it was a f- Ferrari, a Corvette, and then Iron Dames. Okay, cool. So I don't remember. Uh, it, Toyota definitely took the championship as far as the, the top class goes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think they also won the constructors as well. Yeah. I don't know who in GT <clears throat> took the, the. I think it was car. Iron Dames. Did Iron Dames take Oh, it? no. No, the championship's been wrapped up for a while. Corvette took that a long time oh, ago. Oh, you're right. You're yeah, right. Yeah, Corvette took that a while ago. That's right. But that will be the last race of the that iteration of the Corvette. Mm-hmm. Corvette will be back in GT3 spec. Mm-hmm. Um, I also did see that... Uh, I think this was... You had sent me an article today about uh, WEC limiting the number of GT manufacturer entries. Mm-hmm. Yes, which is... Mm, not what we want to see. Not what I want to see. No, they're basically saying you have to have a full entry for the whole season if you want to run Le Mans. Mm-hmm. Not what I was hoping to see. No, because I want at Le Mans. It's it's a big track. You can fit a lot of cars in that track. It is, but can you see from their perspective where they're not wanting a manufacturer to come in, win Le Mans, and then not race anymore? I get that. Yeah. Yeah, I get it, but I also would like to see all the manufacturers because that's cool could you imagine if ford came in won Le Mans, and then left that would be a very ford thing to do yes <laughs> i mean it would be <laughs> i could see that happening yes but it would piss off the aco of course it would yeah so uh, uh, yeah i guess i don't really blame them but mm, not the best for the fans exactly yeah so is there any racing this weekend no D- no that no there's, there's none? like nothing. I mean, there's World Racing League at Sebring. If you're local and you want to go catch some amateur racing, okay, catch that. Um, uh, no, other than that, there's the following weekend. You have F F one in Vegas, right? right? Then you have a GT race that is going to be mass chaos. The Macau GT Cup, Macau Grand Prix, yeah, from Macau. That's if you've ever watched any highlights of like a massive GT car pile up. On a street circuit, 99.9% of the time, it's going to be Macau. It's very narrow. The cars all pile up, and they just run into each other. It'll be gnarly. Yeah. So that's the same weekend as F1. Okay. So not but this it, weekend, but the next one. With time change, it may even also be at 1 a.m. I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For those of us who still do time changes. In, yes. Oddly okay. enough, we still do. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Yeah, I think NASCAR's done for the season. WEX done for the season. IMS is done for the season. Like, We're winding down. We're in off season now. Yeah. Indy cars done. We have F one and F one. Yeah, and not much of that left either. No, there's only not what much three at all. races left. Four, I think so. Which you know what that means? Rumor mills will be kicking up here soon. Silly season, baby. Let's go. Silly season. Let's which go. is honestly some really exciting stuff. It it is quite fun because the shenanigans that happen in the silly season are unlike anything that happens in the normal season it's going to be funny to watch and see what happens mclaren will be suing people ferrari will be pissed at people it's it's silly season time yeah it's silly season time it is it is so that's going to wrap us up for episode 291 thanks so much for watching listening if you're watching on youtube please subscribe to the channel leave a thumbs up and drop a comment on the video let us know what were your thoughts on the nascar season finale at phoenix 
Did you like the outcome or not? And if you're listening on audio only, send us those thoughts via social. Facebook is We Are Auto. Instagram is We Are Auto underscore. YouTube is We Are Auto. And our website is We Are Auto.io. So thanks again. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.